Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. And recently with all the baseball I've been shooting, I've kind of felt like I'm in a slight photographic rut. I go out to the baseball game and I'm not really sure what I should shoot. I don't exactly have an assignment and I just pitter patter around and I'm not happy with the results that I'm getting. And I know a lot of people out there find themselves in similar situations where you're like, hey, I'm stuck in a rut. How do I get out of it as a photographer? Well, for the Phillies game yesterday, I gave myself an assignment as well as a challenge. The assignment and challenge was this, single shot mode. I could only shoot one frame when I pressed the shutter. No motor driving, no spraying and praying, just one shot and what I get is what I get. So I ended up taking only 70 images across five and a half innings before I got bored and decided to leave the game. And I wanna show you the best of the best images that I got as well as the not so good images, because I want you to see everything that I got. It was only 70 photos. A lot of times when I'm shooting a baseball game, it's 1,000, 1,500 photos or more, because sometimes you're shooting at 20, 30 frames a second, or even nowadays, 195 frames a second with the R3. So I shot with the Canon R3 out at the Phillies game, not that the camera really mattered, being that I was shooting just one shot. It's a great challenge to force you to anticipate the action and anticipate the motion uh, and just get one shot. So as you can see here, it's showing 71 images. That's because one of them I turned black and white and still left in color, this Schwarber one right here. But let me go through what I think are my favorite images from the day. They, are not, may, they may not be the best of the best with honor, sir, but I think they're close enough. So we've got 18 of 71 selected here. So let's take a look. All right, we got Schwarber running on the field. I got the 85 -1 I love that lens for separating my subjects from everybody else, and that's why I you know, chose this lens. So one shot, you're looking for the right action. You're looking for where is the foot going? Is it, is it up, is it down? You're trying to get that shot, you're anticipating, you're lock on tracking. Now, I guess an, a more fun assignment, or not so much fun assignment, would be, Jared, shoot manual focus and nothing else, but I'm not, I've never been good at manual focus. So anyway, one shot at a time. So we got that, I chose this one. I got a couple of similar ones to this. Oh, and by the way, most of these, well, actually all of them are edited with Skittles. We'll, we'll show you that when we get to a plug, but I just like this because he was gonna throw it into the crowd. 85, separating him from everybody else makes the isolation much better. Schwarber running back into the infield, or sorry, running back in from warming up right before the game after the national anthem. And I knew I also wanted to get him coming out of the dugout as well. But this is the right shot. He's, his feet are split at the exact moments, the, the exact way that I would want it. Nice and sharp, even at 1-2, nailed it. 1 2500th, 1 200 ISO, looks really good. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so I'll just show you before and afters, because that, that's without Skittles, that's with Skittles. I know I didn't do the plug yet, but still, I just, I just had to show you what it looks like. Next up, in the dugout, still nice isolation. Now, if we had a 135.18 or a 135.14 or some other speedy glass like that, I think it would be a little tighter, a little better. I could have used the 400, but it would have just been a little too tight for my taste. It probably would have been something along those lines. Um, but I, I kind of like, the isolation here, I like we've got the other players in the background, and so it's all right. Not the greatest, but not super distracting. I love how the people just dissipate in the background. All right, coming out of the dugouts, I think this is Castellanos, so he's coming out here. I like that, fill in the frame. I don't so much like the uh, security guy in the back, but that is what it is. Next, we've got Schwarber coming out of the, uh, out here. He's the one of the Philly stars, tons of home runs this year. So I like this nice isolation coming out of the dugout. I like that shot. Uh, now we've got gameplay. When it comes to gameplay, it's not exactly easy to know where anything's going to happen. You know the pitcher's going to pitch the ball, you know the batter's going to try and hit the ball. You know those two things. You have control over where you can shoot there, but you don't know where the ball is going to go in the field. You don't know if it's going to go to, there's nine players out there 
Plus you got the batter makes the 10th, you got the umpires, you got, you got more people. You, you don't know where things are gonna go. But you have to think, if it's a right-hand batter, he's more than likely going to pull the ball at least to the right-hand side of the field. Sorry, that's a left-handed batter is gonna hit it to the right side of the field. The left-handed batter is gonna, the right-handed batter is gonna hit, go, go the other way. So you just have to kind of understand the game a little bit. Or when it's three and oh, they're probably not swinging, so don't waste the frame. Don't waste that, that shot. Especially when we shot film, you knew like, mm, you may not want to shoot at three and oh, unless maybe you think they have a green light. Green light means they might get, if they see a good pitch, they could hit it. So you just have to try to anticipate where to go. So in this one, I'm locked off on the first baseman and I'm shooting on action. So when I hear the ball get hit, I'm hoping for it coming right to the first baseman. But here he's moving to first base because it was going to be a, a, a possibility of a double play at second base. Um, which I actually didn't get in focus at second base, but we'll see when I show you the rest of them. So we got this guy hitting the ball, running. It's all right, not the greatest thing since sliced bread. Went black and white because, well, I didn't think the color was that good. Um, it's okay, but it's still good. Now this was a turning point in the game, a pivotal point, pivotable. A pivotal point in the game because he loses the ball in the sun. So I was on the right player this time, the, the, the second baseman, he couldn't find the ball. So I'm just watching him tracking and I'm waiting for the moment to take the picture. Because I know when I take it, I could keep pressing, you know, take my finger off, press again, blah, 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 but not motor drive. But I didn't want to do that either. I wanted the, the, the one moment. So that's the one moment. So for this next shot, I moved into the inside third base side. It's a really good vantage point for using a 400 on the pitcher. Uh, it's very tight for a 400 on a batter, as you'll see in just a second. And it's okay for getting fielders in the field. It's a really clean shot. We've got the netting we can shoot through. Well, we've got an opening in the netting which allows us to shoot. So I think this is a good time, uh, good timing. The, the ball is starting to come off the fingers. We got the chain flying. He's throwing the ball. He's isolated. I didn't cut his foot off. I like that. Next up, we've got Schwarber batting. So my anticipation was trying to get not the ball on the bat here, but the follow through with the right hander. Uh, or just a, a good shot. Anyway, he hit it into the dirt. He ends up being thrown out at first base. It wasn't a great one. Ooh, look at this. I'm at one sixteen thousandth of a second at one two at 100 ISO with the 51. Point two. I, I just like the isolation and tightness that you get. This is also a big testament to the cannons and the fact that you can shoot sports at one two and still get your focus exactly where you need it to be. Um, switching over to the 70 to 200. For the pitcher, what am I out of 200 for this? Yeah, I'm out of 200 for this. Greatest thing ever? No, I only have his one arm. Actually, he's got no arms. All right, Jared, great, no arms. Not the greatest shot ever. I was late again reacting to this ball hit to the shortstop. You could tell I'm late because I'm getting him throwing. I'm not getting him moving and picking up the ball. Nonetheless, it's an, it's an okay shot. Not the greatest, but okay. This is still the very difficult shot to do from, from inside third base. You got the 402.8 on. Now I'm trying to get ball contact. Um, I was just ever so slightly off for this shot as well. Ever so slightly off. Um, now for Stott, I went back to the 7200, zoomed in, we're at 200 millimeters. I think that gives us a good frame. Now I'm trying to get ball on the bat. I, I was just a little late on the swing, but we still have the ball in there. I think he fouled that one back and off, just down, down. Actually, that's right after he hit it because it didn't hit the ground yet because there's no dirt flying. So that's right before it hit the dirt. Um, now, before I was leaving, I like this vantage point for pitchers. It gives you a cool shot here. Let me show you the next one real fast. It's a cool vantage point. Now, you may be wondering what is this black blob that is one of the cameras that's behind home plate. Nothing I can do to get rid of that. I kind of like this composition. We've got the ball between home and uh, the pitcher's mound and home. And this one, we've got the, uh, the, the pitcher's hats coming off. I don't understand wearing that thing underneath, but maybe it's for sweat. The second baseman is moving because the Philly is trying to steal second base. I'll show you that photo because it's not the best of the best, but I'll show it to you after that, uh, after this, because it was, you know, these were considered my favorite ones from the game. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you Fro Pack 3 in action on this image right here, starting with Prestige Worldwide. That is a great catch all for this type of image, followed by Mentos, then we've got MDMA. We've got King Contrast, which looks really interesting, followed by Eckert, as well as Capone. 
But for stuff like sports and landscapes and outside images, my go-to as of late has been Skittles because that's what Skittles looks like. Now, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point on the desktop or in mobile, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you could check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you want to get Skittles as part of Fropack 1, 2, and 3, aka the Triple Play Bundle, you can get the Triple Play Bundle and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. And then the last shot that I favorited was this one. Um, I was locked off on the shortstop, hoping that the ball gets hit to the shortstop. Well, it got hit to him, except the fact that it's his whole body over him. So it's probably about eight feet over his head. Um, it would have been great if he was catching the ball or was going it right into the glove, then it would have been a good shot. But it's really so much easier to shoot from up here than down on the field. Um, but down on the field is going to give you the best type of action shot because it's just, they're bigger. You're underneath the field shooting at field level if you're in the, in the first base dugout side because that gives you a really good vantage point down low, except for those nets. The nets kind of get in the way, but they also protect you in case there's a foul ball. So you're going to get better shots down there, but a lot of it, and if you haven't seen the critique video that I've done with Brad Mangan. There's two of them where he talks about he may lock off on the third baseman the entire game and not get anything. You just don't know when it's going to happen. It's a crapshoot. So I was locked off in the right place here. It's a good shot. I think it looks good. I think Skittles looks good on it because that's the before and that's the after. But let's go through the rest. Let's show you all of the pictures, including not the best of the best. So we're going to uncheck those. Let's go back to the top and just show you. So this one of Schwarber running. Didn't like this one as much because the pole coming out of the top of his head, but loved the 85 with this. And I guess that's all right because you can see the Schwarber name, but I kind of like this where he was running past me. Um, not perfect, not the greatest. So now we've got this, uh, the, the pitcher, he's going to throw a ball up into the stands. Also, it was tough to go black and white because these Phillies baby blue uh, throwback jerseys are really nice. These are what they used to wear in the 80s. Uh, and, the, and the baby blue, powder blue, is beautiful. It's really, it looks really good against the green, so it, it isolates them well. But now it's just picking which one do I like better. So his eyes are in the shade. Eh, don't like his face on this one. And here the eyes are not in the shade. It's much better. So yeah, I went with that one. This guy running, not as important as Schwarber running. And then this guy running, doesn't have a good look on the face. And I was just a little late and I chopped off his toe ever so slightly. Not ideal. If I didn't do that, if I was tilted or I went a little bit earlier, it would have been a little better. So the whole thing here is you're just trying to anticipate when to take that picture. You're not relying on and and doing bursts. 70 pictures across the game for the half the game that I shot. Uh, this is a horizontal, brings you in a little closer, so it's all right. It's a, it's a crapshoot between these two. Actually, maybe this one might be better because you got Schwarber in it behind him and not Stott or Stubbs or whichever one this guy is, the shortstop. Um, yeah, actually, so yeah, let's switch it out. That one's probably better. That's good. I like this. Black and white, I don't think it works as well, but it, it's pretty good. It's a good pitcher shot, except for the fact his eyes are closed. You might be saying, Jared, why, why did you shoot from the first base side if there's right-handed pitchers? Because I've started every game from the, the third base dugout and wanted to do something different. I wanted to change it up and be on the first base side this time around. Um, when, when you get a batter up there, it's much harder to know when he's gonna swing. So a lot of it's dependent on the count and you're trying to anticipate when they're gonna swing. So here, no swing. No, so it wouldn't be a good image. Uh, player in the field, I'm going on contact, right? Trying to take an image. It's not that good, but I love the isolation, but there's no action going on. Went on contact here with the first baseman moving this way, and it was too tight. As you can see, I cut off his foot, cut off the top of his head. He was going to make a play. I think it ended up going foul. Uh, not a great look on the face, but it's just a, you know, not action. This is action moving towards the bag, the base, like we said. This is the one happening at second base. I think this one is not sharp because I think I moved quick and I missed it. So I, I think I went from here and it should have been, should have been on like second base or shortstop because that's where the action was happening. Let me just make sure it's the same play. So that's at 
119 and 20, and that's 119 and 18 seconds. So yeah, that was two seconds after the one shot. So I quickly rotated and missed it. I just missed it, out of focus. Or is his foot in focus? Nope, nope. The bag's not, nope, I don't think anything's in. I think I missed it just ever so slightly out. One of the few that is out of focus. Now, I like this because this was what I was going for. I wasn't going for him missing the pitch, missing the ball. I was going for the follow through because he's a left-hander. If I get him just swinging from the left-hand side, his head will be down and I'll just get the side of his helmet. So I won't get anything good. So I was waiting for the follow through because that would make for a better image. Uh, it's a better image except for the fact that the ball's in the catcher's hand and it's a strike. So he missed it. So it's not a, it's like, it's like when skateboarders yell at you that if they don't land the, the trick, you can't use it. In this case, if the ball's in the pitcher, in the catcher's hand, it's not good. Now, if he hit a home run on it, it's a totally different story. And then I figured I would take a picture of him walking back to the dugout after he struck out. Um, first baseman looking the other way on contact. Uh, this guy tipping his hat to the dugout. It's all right, not, not special. Pitcher, no face, no eyes. Uh, Castellanos missing this one. We already saw these. This is just a player running in, in between innings. Nothing special. This one's not as good, cut his toe off. Don't like the action as much, but like this one much better. Schwarber just waiting, so you're, you're anticipating, and this is where you burn frames, because you don't know when it's gonna happen. You take the picture. Nothing happens, no good, boom. Then we got him running the first base, not great. Uh, not great. Nope, miss. This is a great composition, but it's just the back of the guy's helmet, really. It's really nice at, with the 100, 100 millimeters. It's a really nice frame, nice straight lines, everything looks good. It's not that incredible of a shot, though. It's not like a showstopper. Good composition, just not a showstopper. This is just a guy just before he's pitching, Nothing special, not a good, not a good uh, motion there. Um, another pop up, just a second late on the infield fly. It wasn't an infield fly, but a, a fly ball inside the infield, so a pop up. And then with stuff like this, you're just anticipating. You're trying to get the bat on the ball. And the closest I got was the first shot. I was just off, just off. He was a little off too, so I guess he makes contact on this. Runs him out to first base. You can see the play being made. Umps in the way. Not, not, not the umps' fault. Trying to go vertical for this. Didn't like it, so didn't take too many pictures here. Again, not a good follow through. Playing the outfield, nothing special. If he's diving and sliding, a little better. Uh, this isn't a play either. They threw the ball to him after the inning so that he would have a ball for, for you know, infield the next inning, but not real good action. So you can see not a lot of, not all of these are gonna be great. Most are in focus though, as we go through this. I was late again. We had a play by the third baseman. I missed it. That's the result of what I missed. So not perfect. It's all right. Outfield, just super deep. Hey, where's my play at second base? I missed it. How'd I miss it? <laughs> I don't know how I missed the play at second base. Here's the play at second base. So here was the pitch. He falls off. I'm already vertical. So I see the second base, the shortstop moving in for a play at second, and he's out, right? This would have been better horizontal, of course, because then if it was horizontal, I might have had the pitcher falling off to the side, but it's also not super tight at 400 millimeters. So again, not that special. I could have tried some different angles for certain things, and this, the, so this was just throwing the ball in, and this was throwing the ball, which is right here, into the crowd. 70 pictures, that's all I took. So it's a fun challenge. And I challenge you to do the same thing from time to time. Don't motor drive. This was less than two rolls of 36 exposure film. Baseball photographers would probably take 20 rolls of film during a game of 36 exposures, shooting six to seven to eight frames a second back in the day. That's just what they would do because they're trying to anticipate the action. Like if a batter, like Mark McGuire's coming up to bat, you're gonna be firing off every single pitch, even at three and oh, just in case he gets a good pitch. And so you're just burning through film. You're just waiting for that one. You're not even waiting. You're hoping that you get that one shot. The rest are just burners. They really don't do anything. So. This was a good challenge for me. A better challenge, another challenge, would be if I locked off on one player only and spent the whole day just focused on one player. It wouldn't be fun, 
Actually, an even better challenge is Jared stay for nine innings. I haven't stayed for nine innings once this entire season. Not in Chicago when I did two games there and not in Philly since I've done like 20 games there so far. I haven't stayed past like the seventh inning at this point. That's just me. I, I just, it gets monotonous over time. So I hope you like this. It was something a little different, a challenge to myself. If you feel yourself getting stuck in a rut, just kick your own ass. Get out of the damn rut. Go do something a little different. Change it up a little bit and see how your results turn out. So that's what I have to say. Leave some comments down below. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.